Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. We're hitting you up with a good one. It's Baker versus Carr, the Supreme Court decision from 1962, which is muy, muy importante. Whether you have a paper due in the morning or a test in the morning, you need to know it. Or if you just want to do a little bit of learning, that's fun too. So one man, one vote, let's do it. Yeah. So in 1962 in Tennessee, the census, uh, which determines population, hadn't been used since 1900 to really draw those congressional district lines in Tennessee. Of course, every state has a different number of House members, and depending on the population of the state, you get so many districts. And Tennessee had left those district lines alone for a very, very long time, for 60 years at this point. And Baker, Charles Baker, lives in Memphis. Memphis is an urban center in Shelby County, Tennessee. And he's looking around, he's going, oh, all people live here, oh, all people live here. And they get one congressperson, they get one, and he's looking over and he's saying, well, wait, we have, you know, I don't know, a million people over here and there's like 10,000 people in that county and they get one too. Yeah, it doesn't seem very fair. It doesn't seem like my vote means the same as their vote over there. And you can kind of go dig into the reason of that, but we're in the civil rights era and really we're talking about rural areas being overrepresented. Uh, Represented? Is that a word? But these urban areas aren't being represented the same way. So basically, Mr. Baker is going to the Supreme Court saying, look, this guy, Joe Carr, nice guy, I like it, Joe Carr. You're a nice guy, but you're the Secretary of State, and you're enforcing this, uh, you know, system in Tennessee, which is a violation of the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment, and this is what you want to write down, kitties, no state shall deny its citizen equal protection under the law. Charles Baker is like, what about me? And he goes to the Supreme Court with this idea. Now, in 1946, in Colgrove versus Green, the court said, do, 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 do. We're not going to touch this because that's a political question. It's called the political question doctrine. And the court believes this is a political question, not a constitutional question. They don't want to go near that because then it looks like they're violating kind of this idea of, you know, separation of powers. But in 1962, that's going to change with Justice William Brennan, who's going to say that this isn't a political question, that this is a judiciable question. This is a question that the justices should decide, because really we're talking about the mechanics of the Constitution and how that system is being applied unfairly in Tennessee. So they're reversing precedent. This is a huge decision, because basically what they're saying is to the states is, we don't trust you. Right? You're going to have to draw those lines, those district lines in a way where everybody is getting the same weighted vote. So you have maybe 150,000 people in this district and 150,000 people in this district. So everybody has a congressperson that represents the same, basically, you know, amount of people. That's the idea. One man, one vote. Stick that in the sack, baby. In terms of effect, this is a huge win in terms of civil rights because there's a lot of underrepresented individuals that are now going to get represented because the states are going to have to go back to the drawing board to kind of draw those lines over again. It also, I think, in a negative connotation, is going to lead to gerrymandering. Gerrymandering, you can watch that video right there about that. It's basically now that they're going to have to draw the lines equally, they're going to draw some very crooked lines to make sure that, you know, maybe some demographics, some different types of people get split up a little bit. We also have the issue of, you know, whether the Supreme Court in current times right now should be dealing with issues like voter ID laws. Is that a political question or is that a constitutional question? I'm not answering that question, but that definitely is related to this idea of one man, one vote, of everybody having equal access and the same kind of weight to their vote. So Baker versus versus Carr, one man, one vote. Two years later in Reynolds versus Sims, we're going to apply that to state legislatures. So the courts are now going to have to apply the same logic um, when you go vote for your assemblyman or your state senator or whatever the concept is, that everybody's vote is treated equally. Power to the people, baby. All right, we'll uh, see you guys next time that you tune in. All you got to do is, you know, subscribe right there, big red button, and then check out some videos and uh, where attention goes, energy flows, and all that groovy stuff. All right, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm not Canadian.